setting new standards in podcast excellence. You have joined the WBT, fully focused on business and taxes. Here is your host, Michael Lodge. And welcome to the WBT. This is Michael Lodge. I'm glad that you have joined me. It's a beautiful day out. This is being podcast from Palm Beach, Florida, where the sun is out, the clouds are out, could rain any moment, could sunshine any moment, who knows? Listen, I'll be right back right after this. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. So I think you've noticed that the numbers coming out of uh, our business communities are really quite good. Unemployment is way down. Consumer confidence is strong. Manufacturing jobs and manufacturing output is very good. So if you look at the economy and all the numbers that are associated with it, you will see that the economy is is grinding right along. My problem is is when we have political commentators who want to delve within the business community and they have no idea of what they're talking about. So the, if the direction in which they go is way out of line because they want to make a political point. So what I would suggest to you, if you're going to listen to business news, as soon as a political commentator comes on and thinks he knows what he's talking about when it comes to interest rates and uh, consumer confidence and consumer spending and all this, they don't know what they're talking about. Because they are there now to make a political point and not to make an economic point. And that's where it becomes dangerous. And what I've always told people when they want to get into these conversations, into these arguments, you better know your numbers. I remember during the Obama administration, they were always throwing out all these numbers. Fox News was doing everybody was doing it. But they failed to look at the entire picture. There are two reports that come out of the government that describe what our jobs are doing, what the unemployment rates really are. And they look at it by industry, they look at it by who's participating, who has dropped out. It's all these bigger numbers. So you had to look at the entire picture before you were able to really commentate about the economy. And and this is what's happening right now. We have so many people on CNN and MSNBC and CBS and ABC and all of the networks out there, Fox News even, out there making all these commentaries. But then when you really listen to the real business people who are making the comments, that's where the real information is gathered from because they're looking at this information all the time. Can you imagine talking to the CEO of McDonald's as, a, as an example? And as he's talking, he's talking about his personal experience of how his industry is doing out there in serving the American public and also the international public and what their spending is all about. When the economy is good, you see more spending. When the economy is down, you see less spending. So when we see people buying and spending more, that kind of gives us a direction of where we're going. And right now, we're in a situation where the economy is spending. And the economy is 
moving forward at a good rate. It's not leaps and bounds. If we went by leaps and bounds, we'd be in trouble. If we went by leaps and bounds downward, we would be really in trouble. But we're moving at a nice economic rate. Now, I didn't. I did not agree with Trump on lowering of the rates, and I'll tell you the reason why. At some point in time, the economy may go down. If you've already lowered your rates down to zero, where which direction are you going to go if the economy goes down? There's nothing that they can do to lower it even more. You can't go negative. So the economy, I suggested, keep the rates where they are. Use those rates for the rainy day when something should happen. And you never know what will happen in the economy. So you need to have a backup plan. Now, I understand how why Trump is doing it because he wants to improve the economy anymore. He wants to get people borrowing more in businesses and taking out business loans and et cetera, et cetera. But I think that we need to be a little cautious because really the economy the economy was doing quite well even without a lowering of the interest rates. So my what's my point? Okay, let let me get to my point. My point is is that you have to not just listen to one source of news when it comes to the business. You cannot just listen to political commentators who are making business comments. You have got to listen to the people who are really out there working in the the normal economy that's out there. The Home Depots, the uh, uh, Walmarts, the Targets, the McDonald's, the all those individuals who are monitoring what is happening on a daily basis on the spending habits of America. And also the investing part of America too. Be cautious. Be cautious of the information that you're seeing. Do some digging yourself. You can go to the Department of, of Employment and see the numbers flowing through. And that is where you should get your own answers. I think we're, 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 our, what our problem is is that we have become such a data-driven society and most of the data that's being pumped at us is through 24-hour news cycles that wear us out. Instead of doing our own research, we're listening to these this output of nonsense. So we have to be very careful about this. Data, bad data in, bad data out. So if you're getting bad data in, you're going to get bad data out. I want you all to understand how important it is to know the numbers. It's just very important. Otherwise, you're going to be fed a bunch of baloney, and you won't know what hits you when it really does come. I believe in planning. And if we're looking at the numbers, we can pretty much look out there. I mean the real numbers, not the stuff that's on the news. I'm talking about real numbers, the real data from the real people who are looking at it every single day. We can pretty much plan on how to tweak our businesses in order to adjust to what the economic data is going to be. If we see there's a slowdown, then we tweak back just a little bit. Or we adjust our rates, or we adjust our our, our billing amount. But if we have good data, and if we are really focused on hiring people that look at the data, then you will be safe. Maybe safe isn't the word, but you will be prepared. That's the better word, prepared. Now, one of the things that I have been trying to get across to people is the fact that we have a lot of people out there on the internet, especially Instagram, Facebook, and now even into LinkedIn. LinkedIn has become corrupted a little bit by all of these schemers out there and all of these promoters of seminars and 
real estate deals and everything else. Just one moment. I need a cup of. I need a drink of coffee. There's nothing better than coffee, huh? Or tea. But what I have seen on the on social media lately are people out there trying to drive a scheme, a scheme that the only people that really make money are the schemers and the people who are paying these huge absorbent prices for seminars and everything else are not really getting anything except motivation. Now, I don't know why anybody would pay $10,000 to go get motivated. I have no idea. I, I think that that's a w- very weak way of thinking. Motiv- motivation has to come within yourself to know that you want to do something and you're going to go out there and you're going to do it. You're going to build something. But if you keep going to these feel-good things, you're just going to feel good all the time, but you're never going to build anything. At the end of the day, you have nothing. So you need to get off your butt and do something instead of paying these absorbent amounts of money on feel-good seminars. If you want to spend money on educating yourself, find out the issue that you feel that you're weak in. If you don't know how to read your financial packages or your financial statements, Hire someone or hire or go to a seminar that will teach you how to read your financials. If you don't know how to look at your production on your manufacturing line, go to a seminar that will teach you how to do that. If you want to know how to get more clients for your business or for your real estate business or whatever it is, go to a seminar that focuses on that. Don't go to these feel-good seminars that's going to get you up and go rah, rah, rah. Because let me tell you, in business, you get very little raw, but you get a lot of hard work. And you need to know the areas that you are weak on and become stronger. That's why you do daily educational motivation of yourself to get out there and study, study. There are books. There are podcasts. Podcasts out there now have an array. If you're a coach, there are so many, so many podcasts out there that are geared to coaching or business management, human resources. They're all out there. There are thousands of podcasts out there. That's why I created this podcast so I could educate people about business issues. But don't spend thousands of dollars on nonsense. Now, one of my one of my uh, thought process, especially in business, is how we run our businesses, and a lot of us are. Just skimming over the top because they want to get to fast money. Not realizing that it takes a little bit of work in between to get to real money. Real money is that money that is stable, consistent, and keeps growing. Fast money is just get your money fast and run. Thinking that that's what makes them rich. But in business, we have some responsibilities. One of those responsibilities, and the most important, is that we have to be ethical in our business practices. How we treat people, how we treat our clients, how we treat deals, how we, how we promote, how we advertise, how we market, how we do our accounting, and the list goes on. Ethics in everything. The other issue is that, listen, we need to do a a lot more listening. A lot of us are just jumping to conclusions without even listening. We're getting into arguments without listening to what the other person is really saying. We need to listen first, and then we need to respond thoughtfully. Not just to make ourselves look mighty and powerful with strong, agitated words, but instead we listen, 
we think and then the words that come out of our mouths should be words of wisdom or questions to get to the next place. Listening and asking good questions creates a business atmosphere where it strengthens the relationships within. The other day I was talking to a client who had we'd, we were doing a, a video conference. And one of the questions I asked was, what is your vision? He says, and he could tell me every single thing about the product he was selling or the service he was providing. But he could not tell me what the vision of his company was. The vision, the story, the outline that everybody should know from the president all the way down to the janitor should know what the vision of the company is. And that's how they live their business lives within that business. Know your vision. Know your story. And every single one of your employees should know that story also so that they can tell it and live it to your clients. Even your clients should know what your vision is for your company. It is your company. And if you don't have a vision, you're not going to go very far. Now, I've already talked about this, and that's about knowing your financials. Knowing your financials is so very important in order for you to be able to answer questions of investors, of employees, of department heads, of industry analysts, whoever is asking you the story of your company, the story begins with your financial statement. Because that is where you make adjustments in how you run your businesses by reviewing and knowing your financial statements. So many of you don't know that. Most of you are measuring your success based upon the amount of money that's in your bank account. Do I have enough money to meet payroll? Do I have enough to buy my uh, to pay down my suppliers? That's what you worry about. That's what we all worry about. But in order to operate our business, we also need to know what our financial statements are telling us. Are we misusing manpower and man hours? Are we wasting money by having people sitting there in their jobs doing nothing? Your financial statements will tell you that. What product lines are not selling? You can see it in your financial statements. How come the cost of producing that product has gone up? Financial statements tell you that. Know your financials. It's so vital that you know that because if you can't tell your financial story, then you really can't tell the story of your company. Know your financials. Get it together. Now, in October, all of you, if you're in business, should sit down and start doing your plans for 2019, your goals and objectives. I mean, not 2019, 2020. I've just got used to saying 2019. <laughs> Now we have to start thinking about 2020. Well, time goes by fast. So you need to start developing your plan. And then once you have developed your plan, your budgets and your financial forecasts and everything else, and these things don't need to be gigantic. All you have to do is sit down and say, this is where I want to be. This is my plan for 2020. And this is my budget of what I want to spend. And this is my budget of how much I want to make. And how we're going to get there, that is your plan. Once you know your plan, then you need to execute your plan. A lot of you just write the things down on paper, but you never execute it. You never go to the next level. You never talk about it with your employees and get their ideas of how they feel that they can execute that plan and help you execute that plan. Execute the plan. Write the plan. And I, listen, 
I write all my plans on paper. I have a journal, and that's where I write my plans. Every day I sit down and write my plans for the next day or for today. I make adjustments. I look at what I planned for the for 2019, and then I see where we are. I look at my financials. I look at at um, other reports that that are there available to me, and I begin adjusting to make sure that I meet my goals and objectives. It sounds like a lot of work, right? But listen, success is work. Success isn't just say, okay, I'm going to make a million dollars this year. How are you going to get to that million? What is your plan of action to get you to that million? Get your plans in line and then follow through. One of the objectives of my company, since I've now moved into Palm Beach, and I did this when I was in Los Angeles, is to get involved in my community. Look at the issues in your community that needs help. Several years ago, we put this program in San Bernardino County, way out in um, the Inland Empire of Los Angeles. And we put together a program called Excel, which was a, which was a free tutoring program for inner city schools in the city of, uh, in the county of San Bernardino. Now, I don't know if you know anything about San Bernardino, but what has happened to it, it used to be a thriving community. It was one of those up and coming communities. There were huge, uh, homes out there and, and uh, supporting the medical community because there is such a huge medical community out there. But what happened is that the city of San Bernardino said, listen, we're going to do low-income housing. And they did millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of low-income housing. Well, what happened? All of the people from 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 the gang community decided to move out to San Bernardino. And pretty soon it brought in also migrant people that came in and who are there illegally came in to San Bernardino. Well, that created a problem within the school systems because they had fathers and, and mothers who spoke no English and read no English. But their children were going to school and they could not take their homework home because mom and dad could not help them. They could not read or write English. So we put this program together of tutors and we had all kinds of volunteer tutors. We had doctors, we had PTs, we had OTs, we had nurses, we had uh, physicians' assistants, we had uh, truck drivers, we had all kinds of different individuals that volunteered their time. They would adopt one child in the schoolroom and help that child. Free of charge, just taking an hour or two a week out of their schedule and donated, donating it to that one child that needed help. And we saw a huge increase in in grades, and we also saw them going on to high school and on to college. That's what all of us can do is look at our communities and say, okay, what do we need to do within that community? What What is the need for XYZ, whichever city that you live in, or whichever... Uh, city that you're operating your business out of. Get involved. Get involved. It's only time. Instead of playing games when you get home, volunteer your time. It just takes time. I think about that story because I got so involved in it. I'm going to kind of digress here. We took the kids from Excel and we took them miniature golfing one night. And I was sitting there with one of the 
the sister and brother. They were sister and brother. And I was talking to them, and they were so happy to be there. But they told me a story that the night before, their brother had been shot and killed by gang activity. Drive by. And as I talked with the kids, I noticed that there was very little emotion. But then as the, as the, the uh, kids began to talk, they told me about another brother that had been shot, an uncle who had been shot, somebody else that had been shot. It had become a commonplace occurrence in these people's lives that death came very quickly. Even when I was dropping off a child one night at the school, there were cars driving by watching what we were doing. What were we doing in that in that neighborhood? Some nights you could even hear gunfire as we were leaving the school's tutoring. We could hear gunfire in the neighborhood. I always felt sorry for the San Bernardino Police Department because they never knew what they were going to come in contact with that day. When they got into their squad car to go out, they never knew what was going to happen. So that's why I say it's so very important that if you want to change your community, you as a business can help. You as a business person can help. The other issue is that we as business people, we do a lot of judging without hearing the whole story. And I've seen this happen so many times where just a couple of words were said and then the manager or the or the supervisor jumped to a conclusion without knowing the whole story and created conflict within within the office. We need to listen very, very closely before we make a judgment call when there is an issue in the office. We need to become better. But that is our responsibility as business people is to listen very, very carefully and not jump to the conclusion just based upon what other people said. Know the whole story. Know the whole story. The other issue about telling stories is <laughs> we always talk about branding, right? Well, branding is part of a storytelling process. And you need to know your story. Your employees need to know your story. And you need to be telling your business story every single day. You need to be out there using social media, doing blogs or vlogs or whatever approach that you want to take. You need to be telling your story so people know who you are and what you are about. Branding is so important. When people begin to know their company name and you as the owner or a manager, it does a lot for that business. But it takes every single one of your employees to be doing that. So they should be going out as employees and telling the story of your company, of your business, of your vision. They need to be telling that story. And you need to be telling it every single day. Every single day. It takes work to build a brand, especially a brand name. And one of the things that we don't do enough is coaching. We as managers, we as owners, supervisors, there are individuals that work within your company that need coaching. They need help. I want you to go out and start dedicating more of your time coaching individuals. If you see a weakness in one of your employees, find a way to get him coaching. Find a way to spend your time to help that individual. Coach him. He may not be good in communication. Teach him about communicating. 
He may not be good in an, a, analyzing uh, analyzing an issue. Teach him how to look at things. Teach him how to to move through the departments and, and look at things and what to look for and what not to look for. Every employee needs coaching. And, and we as business owners and we as, as managers need to spend more time on that. Instead of putting a person down, coach them. Build people up. Don't tear them down. The more you build up, the better the team becomes, the stronger the team becomes, and the more the more that people will appreciate their jobs because they know that you've taken the time to work with them. You get to fire them. Ah, you're not doing that. But you know what? If you take some time and coach them and help them through the process, they become a very loyal, loyal employee. Listen, that's the end of my podcast for the day. But if you have any questions, if you have any comments, send me a text at 818-252-5682. I'll say it again. 818-252-5682. And I'll answer any question. I'll listen to any comment. If you have suggestions also of what you would like to hear on this podcast, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Everybody go out and have a good day. Everybody think about what we have talked about today. I love to communicate with you every single day. I love our conversations. Send me a text. Love to hear from you. Everyone, be successful today. Do great things. I'll talk with you very soon. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, totally focused on content. 